Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and today I want to tackle diffraction. We're going to discuss not only what diffraction is, but the practical applications for your photography. There's a lot of misconception about this topic, so let's kick the myths to the curb and give you the real scoop. First off, what is diffraction? When photographers talk about the effects of diffraction, they are generally speaking about the softening of an image as you use smaller and smaller f-stops. On the surface, it seems pretty straightforward, but frankly, it's a real source of confusion for a lot of folks, and I want to try and clear that up today. See, as you stop your lens down to progressively smaller f-stops like 16, 22, 32, etc., you start to lose some sharpness in the overall photo. For instance, in this sample, I grabbed an old topo map and took a couple of quick photos with my D810. Both images are 100% crops. The image on the left was at f5.6, the image on the right was at f22. Note the loss of detail in the image on the right. The first thing we notice is the letters aren't nearly as crisp. Also, note the loss of detail on the contour lines. They're not nearly as sharp on the f22 image as they are on the f5.6 image. Finally, note that we can see the little dots from the printing pattern in the image on the left, and they are totally gone in the image on the right. We're going to go ahead and check out some real world examples shortly. So, what causes diffraction? To put it as simply as possible, when a light wave hits an obstacle, like the edge of an aperture blade for instance, it starts to disperse. This has the effect of changing the various wavelengths so they have to travel different distances and they begin to interfere with each other. When this happens, there is a loss of sharpness. The bottom line is that the smaller the opening, the more the light diffracts and the more softening you see in your photos. And right there, that's the part you have to worry about. To kind of give you a quick idea of how this applies to your camera sensor, you need to understand the basics of an airy disc. An airy disc is what the diffraction pattern produced by a circular opening, again, like your aperture, is called. When the lens is wide open, there is very little diffraction, so we get nice, clean, circular dots on our image sensor. As we stop down and the light diffracts, those little airy discs, they start to spread out. Now, let's think about these airy discs as they are projected onto our individual pixels. We'll add a sensor grid to our graph and we can see what happens. At wide apertures, we have nice clean circles within the confines of our individual pixels. As diffraction increases, the airy disks get larger and pretty soon they start to spill over and they overlap each other and that's when we lose sharpness. These airy disks are the same size at a given f-stop, so that actually shows us why a high resolution sensor runs into diffraction sooner than a lower resolution sensor. So, bottom line, as we stop the lens down, diffraction increases and causes an overall softening to the image. Now, this is true for all lenses, even top of the line stuff, it's actually a property of physics, not a defect in manufacturing. Let's take a look at how this affects us in the real world. Okay, here's the overall scene. All photos were taken with a tripod, focused by a live view, shot with a cable release, and the mirror was locked up. The camera used was a Nikon D800E, and it starts to see diffraction about f8 or so. Let's start with a look at a 100% crop taken at f5.6. At this point, diffraction hasn't begun to affect the image, so you can see it has a nice amount of detail. Now, here's f11. You can see we're just starting to lose a touch of sharpness, but it's not out of hand just yet. Finally, here's a shot at f22. At this point, we're really starting to see the effects of diffraction. Notice that all the detail in the trees has completely turned into mush. Keep in mind that we are looking at a very small section of a 36 megapixel file, but still, you can see how diffraction can rob you of sharpness. Now, since diffraction tends to generate a lot of questions, I'm going to do the rest of this video in kind of a Q&A format. Question 1. Wait a minute, I thought when I stopped the lens down to a smaller f-stop that I would have more in focus. Is that not true? This is probably the most common point of confusion when it comes to diffraction. People tend to get depth of field and sharpness all mixed up, or at least think of them as interchangeable. As you know, as you stop a lens down to smaller and smaller f-stops, you do indeed get a larger zone of focus in your image, more depth of field. For instance, in these two images, it's clear we have a larger zone of focus with the f16 version. However, there is a trade-off. As the zone of focus increases, the actual sharpness of the overall image will go down as you start to get into smaller and smaller f-stops due to diffraction. Let's zoom into the focus point, and you can see the tree is actually much sharper in the f5.6 image. So, think of it this way. If you stop down, you'll have a larger number of objects in focus in your photo, but those objects won't be quite as sharp as had they been shot at a wider, more open f-stop. Question 2. 
okay, if I get more diffraction as I stop down, why is my lens sharper when I stop it down a notch or two from wide open? Technically speaking, every stop you go down increases diffraction, period. In many cases, our sensors just aren't capable of showing it until it gets down to some of the smaller apertures. However, stopping down also has the effect of clearing up lens aberrations, basically slight imperfections in your lens. So what's happening initially as you stop down those first few stops is that the clearing up of those lens aberrations is having a much more profound impact on your image quality than the small amount of diffraction that's introduced. When you reach that perfect balance between low diffraction and low aberrations, you land on the lens's so-called sweet spot. In other words, the f-stop that will be the absolute sharpest. As a rule of thumb, it's generally about two stops down from wide open, but it can vary from lens to lens. Question three. So does this mean I should never shoot small f-stops, just stick with the sweet spot or at least f8 and faster? Absolutely not. What it does mean is you need to be aware of the consequences of stopping down. Landscape photographers in particular are sometimes guilty of setting their lenses at f16 or f22 and just leaving it there, even when it's not necessary. By understanding diffraction, you can look at a scene and decide if maybe you can really get away with a faster f-stop than what you're currently using. I don't know about you, but I always want to get the maximum amount of detail I can in an image. So shooting at f16 or f22 when I could get away with f8 or f11 doesn't make much sense, at least not when you consider diffraction. That said, if the photo needs the depth of field you get with f16 to pull it off, then you really need to use f16. I'd rather have a little diffraction in my image than to have the wrong depth of field. Most pros will actually tell you the same thing. In the end, you really do need to strike a balance between depth of field and the amount of diffraction you're willing to tolerate for a particular image. Question four. I hear that higher resolution cameras show the effects of diffraction much sooner than lower resolution cameras. Does that mean I shouldn't upgrade to a higher resolution camera? The first part of that question is 100% true. The higher resolution your camera, basically the tighter those pixels are all packed together on your sensor, the sooner you'll start seeing the effects of diffraction. However, it's far from a deal breaker. First, keep in mind that the amount of diffraction you see from a given lens is always the same regardless of how high resolution the sensor is that's sitting behind it. The reason you see the effects of diffraction sooner on a higher resolution camera is that the sensor is capable of capturing much more detail. Your lower resolution sensor simply wasn't capable of rendering enough detail for you to notice the diffraction. Here's the big thing to remember. A higher resolution sensor will always capture more detail than a lower resolution sensor of the same size. You will never ever lose enough detail due to diffraction on the higher resolution sensor that you would have been better off with a lower resolution sensor. F-stop for F-stop, the higher res sensor will always, big capital letters always, capture more detail than the lower resolution sensor. For instance, if I shot a high res camera at F16 and a lower res camera at F16, I'll always have more detail with the higher resolution camera, even though diffraction is coming through to a much greater extent. In fact, let's prove it with some examples. Okay, for this example, we're going to compare a D4 and a D800E. The D800E starts to see diffraction around F8, whereas the D4 is good to up to about F11. So let's compare a couple of shots taken at F11 giving the D4 a clear advantage since it can't really see much in the way of diffraction yet, whereas the D800 is definitely seeing the effects of it. First, here's the overall scene again. All cameras were focused with live view and images shot with mirror up and camera release on a tripod, and it's the same 2470 lens as well. Now, let's put the same 100% crop areas side by side from both cameras. As you can see, we do have a lot more information from the D800E, however, it's hard to compare since the D4 image is so small. So let's enlarge it to the same size as the D800E since, after all, we're trying to determine if the lower res camera without diffraction will give us better results. This would be like printing both of them at 36 by 24 and then looking closely at a 4 by 4 area. As you can see, the theory that there's no point in getting a higher resolution camera because diffraction erases any gains is most assuredly false. You always get more detail with a higher res sensor, even if that sensor sees diffraction before a lower res sensor does. Just for fun, let's try it the other way. Let's downsample the D800E file to D4 size and then compare the images. As you can see, despite both now being 16 megapixel, the D800E file is still showing a bit more detail. 
What if we go to F16? Now the D4 is just starting to see diffraction, but the D800D is two solid stops into it. Here they are side by side with a D4 image enlarged to D800D size, and again, same results. There is significantly more detail in the D800D file despite the diffraction. Just for fun, let's run the sharpen filter equally on both images and see if that helps. As you can see, since there was more information in the D800E file, sharpening pulled out quite a bit more of that detail. The same amount of sharpening did virtually nothing for the D4 file, since the extra detail and information just isn't there. So no matter how you cut it, you get more detail from higher res sensors. So don't let diffraction fears keep you away from them. And by the way, speaking of sharpening, question five. Can I just sharpen out diffraction? Actually you can, but only to a point. I think this question is actually best answered by looking at our sample photos again, so let's try some comparisons. Once again, we'll examine our overlook scene. For my 2470 and D800E, my best performance was at F8, so we'll use that as our basis of comparison. Here is the unsharpened RAW file showing good detail. Let's go ahead and add a touch of sharpening, and you can see we could actually pull out a lot more detail. Now let's go back to the unsharpened RAW version and look at an image taken at F11. It's close, but the F8 shot is still a bit sharper. Now let's go ahead and sharpen that F11 image. As you can see, sharpening the F11 image brings the detail beyond the unsharpened F8 image. Now let's show the sharpened versions of both. Once again, the F8 image is a touch sharper. Are you ready for F16? Here's the raw file comparison. No doubt diffraction is starting to set in, but let's go ahead and sharpen the F16 image. Now this is pretty darn close, but the sharpened F16 image does seem to edge out the unsharpened F8 image, but only by a smidge. Now let's compare the sharpened F8 image. Again, obviously it wins, but the amount of detail in the F16 image would still make for a fine print. Finally, let's look at F22. No surprise that diffraction has really taken its toll here. The F8 image shows truckloads more detail. Now let's sharpen the F22 image. And it's still not at the same level as the unsharpened F8 image. Of course, add some sharpening to the F8 image and it pulls well away. So you can see that you can indeed sharpen out some diffraction, but when it gets too heavy, there's just no recovering that lost detail. That said, remember this is like looking at a 4x4 area on a 24x36 image, so it's a very tight crop. I think you could still make an acceptable print even with the F22 shot and certainly a nice large print with the F16 image. Would I rather have the F8 image? Sure, but only if it also afforded me the depth of field I needed to pull off the photo. Okay, that about does it for today. Sorry this was so long, but there was a lot of information to cover. Hopefully this will help clear up some of the confusion about diffraction and help you be aware of it in your own photography. Remember though, don't get too terribly worried about it and never let the fear of too much diffraction get in the way of a great image. Also, if you enjoy these tips, you'll want to check out my new ebook, Secrets to Stunning Wildlife Photography. It's 290 pages that are loaded with hundreds of tips and tricks to help you improve your wildlife photography. Check it out at the link below. I think you're going to like it. Finally, thanks so much for watching today. Feel free to share this video with your friends or post it on your website. Also, please sign up for my email newsletter so you never miss any of my tips. And also, I'd love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.